Well, hello again, everybody. This is John Norris at Trading Perspectives. As always, we have our good friends, Sam Clement and Courtney Trust. Y'all say hello. How's it going? Hey, John. Hey, guys. Uh, listen, you know, here we are. News has been kind of dicey this year. A lot of negative news, all that stuff. And, you know, I'm just cynical enough. Maybe, Sam, you being the most cynical person in your generation, yep. which I think we've established. Yes, right, Courtney? I think we have. I might be up there in terms of the most cynical for my generation because I'm I'm going to think that there's going to be a lot of division being thrown at the American uh, population in the 90 days or thereabouts running up to the uh, midterm elections. And one of the things that are going to be, be brought up undoubtedly over and over again is inequality and how American workers aren't keeping up. And Sam, more particularly, I think, how female workers aren't necessarily keeping up or falling behind their male counterparts, which has been a topic of conversation around the around the country for, for a number of years. But even so, uh, from what Courtney said, it's, it's, it's not improving. It doesn't seem to be. So what's What's the issue? Well, I think the new kind of data, or at least the newer focus, mm. is you know there's always been a talk of a gender pay gap, mm. and I think the new article that came out that kind of spurred this conversation is that there's data showing that it's starting earlier, or that they can pick uh, up on those disparities at an earlier point. So I think that's what's really kind of reigniting this conversation. Well, I got to tell you, I mean, Courtney is the resident feminist on the uh, on the Trading Perspectives podcast, right. and this has been. This has been a bee in her bonnet for as long as I've known Courtney, which is going on nine years, maybe not a little bit longer than that. Uh, I feel as if I've always known her. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> um, the word in your side. <laughs> so, so, Courtney, I mean, what do you think's going on? Why do you think this is this happens? Why is the why is the pay gap not only there, but why does it happen? Earlier, I mean, is there anything that you can tell from any of the reading that, readings that you've done? Yeah, I mean, there was a Wall Street Journal article, and by no means is this, you know, something where it's like, oh, the man is keeping the woman down or anything like that. This is not necessarily geared towards hating on men, because I know that sometimes people think that um, that that's what this argument is. It why, is not. Why, why all the caveats? Just come yeah, on. Spit no, out. well, look. Spit I, it out. I, I'm, I no, I'm just going to put that as thing. <laughs> <laughs> the study by the Wall Street Journal basically looked at um, individuals who had received federal student aid, um, and they showed a gap merging. It was roughly, I think, 1.7 million graduates, um, and showed that men made uh, over the the areas. So they actually broke it out into industries and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and that men. Um, topped more than 10% in gross earnings compared to women um, in several of the industries. And I think to me, it is a struggle because it's what are women doing or what are men doing that create this discrepancy or this gap. And then when you start, when you see it, that it's starting really early right out of school, then it makes that gap grow more substantially over time, right? Because when you do look at inflation or when bonuses are given or when natural, um, you know, just annual increases, it's all percentage based off what you make. So obviously if women start lower, they will get a smaller percentage increase and be that much further behind their male counterparts. You know, the problem with all these studies, looking through kind of an econometrics lens and any sort of study that you want to run where you are only looking at the data and you're not actually manipulating it yourself is you need some sort of kind of static variables and you need a ton of data and things that you can make all similar maybe the same exact career the same exact location all these things and i think there is likely not enough data in these studies to really point to what is causing it and probably the truth is that it's a little bit of a lot of things whether it's wanting to go into different I don't know, subsectors within a career path. You know, anecdotally, the, this article talks about that with nursing and men going into um, uh, that were in nursing programs going more into anesthesiology and um, what were you saying? The More often the women were going into midwifery. midwifery. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of things that can cause this. It can be the companies you want to work for and the hours you want to work for, the location you want to work, the quality of life outside of work that you want to have. And so to run any sort of study that you point to it being this issue, I haven't seen one that gives us enough quality data to point to, to what's causing it. 
I, I agree. And with that, thank you all so much. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not in there. <laughs> Some tease about that. <laughs> Courtney, I, I, I would agree. I would agree mostly with Sam on, on, on his contention because I've seen studies like this previously. We've all seen them beforehand. You say uh, female attorneys make 83% of male attorneys yeah. or, or uh, female bankers make 73% of male bankers or just something like that. And unfortunately for, I mean, what Sam was alluding to, we're just calling everyone a lawyer. Yeah. We're calling everyone a nurse. We're calling everyone a doctor or, 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 or what have you. And they're all different subsectors. They're different uh, work ethics. The thing is, I've hired men. I've hired women throughout my career. I've never consciously made any sort of wage considerations based on gender. Never consciously did that. Who knows? Maybe my id or my superego or, or subconscious did, but consciously I, I never did anything along those lines. But I will tell you, after being in the workforce for over 30 years, um, longer than Sam's been alive, I might add, mm -hmm. by, by the way, um, I, I have noticed one thing to be true. Regardless of gender, no two employees are the same. There are no two jobs. The jobs might have the same, same title, but no two jobs are exactly the same, and no two employees are exactly the same. So uh, when I see stuff like that, it's just black and white. The statisticians aren't lying. The numbers aren't lying. But the numbers, I think, tell part, part of the story and maybe not necessarily all, all the story. I will tell you, though, studies like this really do help to put the issue out there and have, make employers think a little bit more uh, when they when they start giving uh, you know giving out wages and I would love like if I could wave a magic wand and get all the data that I wanted for this I mean you could you could break out probably 10 to 20 different variables here and you know make several of them static and really start to get into the nitty-gritty of what causes this and then I think from that point forward you'd be able to have a more honest conversation of what the actual gender pay gap is and not the pay gap between what career you choose, what subsector of that career, the firm you want to work for, the hours you want to work. If you could ignore all those variables, take that portion of that pay difference out, then you could really start to have a conversation about, okay, why are women getting paid less than men for the fact that they are women? Right. And I mean, I think one thing that they did share, and both of, I mean, obviously those are valid um, points, but... They did say nationally, women across the workforce earn an average of 82.3 cents for every dollar a man earns, and that's according to the Labor Department. John, you kind of or you said right that you've interviewed a lot of people mm -hmm. over your career, mm -hmm. and one question that I have for you is: obviously, you've interviewed men and women mm -hmm. for similar jobs, different jobs mm -hmm. at Oakworth and other financial institutions or mm -hmm. uh, companies. Did you notice that men might have been more inclined to negotiate a, the provided salary offered than women? Yes. Um, Sam Sam is one of them. Adam was another one. Um, just people that, that you know here. I, I think uh, I've only made a job offer to one male that didn't negotiate, but sort of half-heartedly negotiated. Uh, and women have t tended to take the take the offer, so I have noticed that without a doubt. And that that's one that's I think, I mean I, I can't figure out a good way where you would get that data. I mean maybe yeah. asking people uh, right. outside of just asking people how you negotiated and if you did, and even then you can't quantify that outside of a yes no variable. And the thing is, what what's uh, and, and and that might be the case. I mean, but but you're absolutely right. It's a compounding effect with that. Let's say, let's say you offer a man and a woman fifty thousand dollars to start, or something along those lines. If the, if the woman takes them takes the offer without negotiating, she starts at fifty grand. If the male negotiates, oh, okay, fine, fifty five thousand. It just what have you? Shut up and I mean, I mean, you know, this that that's. I mean, it's, yeah. employers are trying to get the pay, get the most amount of output for the least amount. Right. Of they have their yeah. business they, yeah. owner. They yeah. have their business hat on. I mean, it, it. And so and so that's and that's one of those deals. And and before you well make an offer to anyone, you say, okay, I'm going to do this, but you know, I'm willing to do this. I mean, you have that kind of number in the back of your head. So, you know, you negotiate up to a certain point, but I say it's a compounding effect because let's just keep the math pretty simple. One person, both people are offered 50, negotiation, one gets up to 55, and everyone gets a 10% raise for the next 40 years. Mm -hmm. 
that five five grand gap at the at the end of at the end of uh, forty years is going to be an explosion in, in difference in, in overall pay. So negotiating from the get go could be part of the problem. Yeah, and I guess from my experience, right, I've definitely taken um, what was offered, but also in two scenarios that I've been offered jobs, I have um, gone back and and tried to negotiate. <laughs> And obviously, I'm negotiate. terrible. <laughs> I am terrible at negotiating because you know what I was told? This is not negotiable. So there, I was to take it as it was or walk away. Um, one, I took it, what was offered, and the other one, I walked away. And I think, you know, it's just hard to, like, where's that fine line? Is it that, um, and I'm obviously, that's just my personal experience that I've had. But I just, I'm very curious about, you know, how do we provide that confidence and knowledge because another thing that the article mentioned was that women are um, less confident about their ability when they enter the workforce that they, I guess, for lack of a better way of putting it, is that they're worthy of the job being offered. Whereas men typically have a little bit more confidence. That's why they're probably more willing to negotiate. Maybe their fathers are telling them or they have other people or they just have that confidence to know I'm worth this and they're willing you know they're going to pay me this I don't know I mean Sam speak to John already t- told us that you negotiated no, I, I mean I just think I mean it, it he kept on negotiating he squeezed a few thousand bucks <laughs> out of me and he kept on going like, calm down Ace Look, I, I mean <laughs> pointing to the the compounding effect of it though I do think um, and, and I don't know I mean maybe it does come from you know thinking differently about what you're worth going into it maybe that does play part of it but all this i mean it's just so hard to if we're talking about 83 cents to a dollar for what you get paid there's going to probably be 20 reasons that make up that 17 cents it's not going to be one thing it's not going to be just how hard you negotiate it it's going to be all these things we've talked about, where you want to work, uh, how many hours you're willing to work, all those things will go into it. And it does seem anecdotally that men are often more times willing to take a miserable job um, to get paid more. And, you know, I don't think... Is that what you did, Sam? (laughs) Yeah, wait a second. What's going on here? Hired you straight out of college. (laughs) (laughs) But you get what I'm saying. I know a lot of people who said, like, I'm going to go take this job. I mean, it sucks, but I'm getting paid pretty well. And, you know, that's worth it to me. And and, and people have different... I know men that don't do that have said, I love where I work. I'm probably not getting paid as much as I could, but I love it. And then the exact opposite. And I don't think it's necessarily a man versus woman thing, but I do think... You probably see that trend a little bit more um, in men. You know, I mean, Courtney's Courtney's underselling her role as or her abilities as a negotiator. Uh, several years ago, Courtney used to report up through me, and she badgered me so much to give her a meaningful raise that finally I did just to shut her up. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> how long did that take, John? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Persistency <laughs> is key. Yeah, you were persistent, all right. Yes. Just like no, oh, gone. But uh, but there might be that might be something to that. But uh, as we, I think we have both kind of, as everyone's kind of touched on, it's sometimes data doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. But that, even with that being said, it is something that HR departments need to be mindful of, and uh, and employers need to be mindful of. And uh, while I've never. While I've made plenty of job offers to people in the past, and, and gender has not really been, not really has not been a factor in, uh, in how much we're, uh, we were willing to offer. Um, that's not to say that other people aren't doing it. However, I will tell you this, and Sam and I have talked about this, regardless of gender, and by the way, there are more than two genders now. I mean, we're at least according to the sociologists out there. Not going there. there. No, uh, not at least according to, to the uh, sociologists out there. Um, <laughs> Just totally opened up like a whole another conversation. Just absolutely, well, lost my lost my train of thought on that. <laughs> yes, I'm not the only one that's done that. <laughs> so hold on a second, we'll wait. <laughs> a moment of silence for John to get his thoughts together. Yeah, but but uh, you know that's not to say that there aren't other firms doing that. However, I have yet to meet an employer that will continue to pay someone above the value of their output for the employer over an extended period of time. Yeah. 
And that so is, why do men continue to be employed and making more money? Well, that, 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 now you're the one sounding cynical. Maybe I'm the most the thing cynical The thing is the here. employer is not going to pay that male more than what the value of their output is for the corporation. That just, that just intuitively, that just doesn't make any sense. You might do it to help a brother-in-law out or a friend out for a short Maybe period a of short time. Maybe a short period. But eight. not, but not, you know, it doesn't matter, man or woman, you're not going to pay someone more than the value of their output or perceived output for, for any length of time. Uh, why, why men would continue to get paid more and women would get paid less? Part of it is negotiating. Uh, part right. of it is that gap from, from the get-go. Part of it is uh, maybe the longevity. I mean, there are any number of different reasons. So the motherhood penalty is also one that gets yes. gets brought up uh, a num- on a number of occasions. And the the motherhood penalty hurts out when you're in a, you know, when you're in a a wage range in an HR department. All of a sudden, you don't work the full year. Yeah, I mean that's it's fine, but you're not going to get the same amount of raise that you would have other, otherwise, and the same amount of incentive. And then that compounds itself over over the life of the career. So there are a number a number of different things out there. But again, I, I just really can't fathom a world in which um, you have two two employees and they're both generating yeah. a certain amount of output for the company. Uh, and one is just getting paid significantly more just because they go to the bathroom. And I feel like I'd want to hire. I feel like I would want to hire those that I could. If we're talking about being able to pay less just for the fact that without, I can without pay a less, doubt, yeah. Putting my business owner hat on, I feel like I'd want to hire more of those people. Yeah, I do think though. Regardless, yes, I I agree that there are other aspects, but I think we're naive to think that women don't consistently get paid less for very similar jobs. And I think that if you did look at certain fields, yes, we have all of the, okay, women go to more social leaning. Um, they want, you know, more out of their jobs. Maybe, yes, the motherhood um, discrepancy or, or any women leaving the workforce and then coming back. Maybe they don't have that experience. But at the same time, I, I bet there are plenty of scenarios in which women are providing the same output and all of that and consistently making less. And regardless, John, like you said, maybe they're poor negotiators, but that's also something for people who are looking at retaining talent and all of that should be looking at. And it shouldn't just be because they didn't negotiate that you're reaping the benefits of that, if that makes sense. Because I get it from an employer. If I was the employer, why would I be incentivized to pay John more if John didn't like have the negotiating skills that Sam had. Okay. How about that? Um, but if you like found it. out that you were doing <laughs> the same job Sam was, you know what I'm saying? Like it's not just, it, it's not about the sex as much as it's about the fact that you're talking about two associates that should have, I think there just should be transparency. And I, I think that's that, one that thing is that something me. that, you know, is, is salary transparency is something that seems to kind of be a trend in workplaces and, and that's um, that's the whole deal when i was coming around you didn't talk about your no, salary and, and i you know i'm absolutely kind of still in that you did camp. not do that because and, why the employer of course would discourage well, that I, I would tell you my first employer i mean obviously I'm, I'm a dude but uh they were paying me well less than what the what they what they should have been paying me so much so that when i, I, I tendered my resignation they came back with a with a counter offer that was seventy five percent more than what I've been getting oh paid, gosh. which just pissed me off. <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't take it because I was so pissed off. I mean, so so that sort of thing. They, so I think I think it's it's not just necessarily based on gender. I think there's a ton of stuff going on, and and uh, companies will try to get the most amount of output for the least amount of price. And Sam was talk, uh, bringing up a good point. Why why pay men a whole bunch more if women are given put out the same level of output for less money? We would just hire more women. And that's why I think it's it, it's so vital to get proper studies and proper data that you can point to what the actual issues yeah. are. But just but just putting everyone in a lawyer bucket, putting everyone in a nurse bucket, or even putting everyone in a cardiologist bucket, if we want to give you, it's just, as I mentioned, there's no two employees are the exact same, and no two, no two people generate the exact same level of output. You didn't seem to like my comments, Courtney. No, and I don't like John's either, because I think that is such an easy <laughs> cop-out to say, to justify why women would it's be not less. justifying it. It is, and when you say, well, no two associates are the same, or no two employees are the same, so that's the justification of why a woman might make less than a man. Okay, I'm, well, what about two men that might do the same job and get paid differently? I mean, it's the same argument, right? Is it's that, not... I want th- an explanation. There isn't a good explanation. Right, which is why we need transparency. 
But in transparency, you were talking about so everyone knows everyone else's salaries. I mean, you have that in the um, in would certain states. That? Yes, if it, I mean, it would benefit me for sure to see transparency because Why I do get, you say that? I think I would probably be paid less than someone. Well, equal. The, the thing that's so strange about that is if we had complete transparency and men made the same amount as women across the board. That'd be awesome. The thing is, it would be horribly ironic because corporations aren't going to lift everyone up to a higher median. It's much easier, much more cost effective to bring the higher to bring the media down median down. So males would end up making less money. Women might make a little bit more, but the net, net result for corporations across the country is, is zero dollar difference in their overall employee related cost. Do you think, okay, so obviously for women or people who are typically making less, I don't really care that men would get make less because it would benefit me to make more. But I could see a man kind of viewing that as a more socialist approach. It's not no. there. I mean, they should be rewarded, I guess, for being able to negotiate higher pay. It's, I mean, socialism is about controlling the means of production. So, but um, well, I, I guess I, I mean, I, like when you try to make everyone, the I, exact I think same. there is something it's, it's worthy a, of indi- individualism no. to what you what people earn, and I, I don't think it should, you know, always be looked at as this is what this role gets paid because I think. In the long run, I think a lot of the that train of thought can have really negative ramifications on companies. But I guess, I mean, how else would you make sure or how else can you track if there is bias and racism or sexism? Better studies. But how, just like you said, how do you take out all of the outliers? Figure, okay, you for these studies, you would have to at least start breaking it down by earnings per hour, I think would be an easy way to, to get a little bit of this out of it. Um, geographical would be a part of it. Instead of looking at it just in terms of what they called marketing and then criminal justice and, and, and law. And they break it out by the university attending. Say, the, uh, yeah. are you doing family law? Are you doing corporate M&A? What are you doing? How many hours are you working? And what does that equate to in the area that you're working? Well, yeah, there, there's, there's biases just inherent in, in right. human existence. As you're mentioning that and talking about the vagaries within individual um, professions, heck, we can take a look at education as well. Yep. I mean, someone coming out of Harvard or coming out of a top 10 school is going to command more of a premium than someone coming out of Auburn or, or Birmingham Southern or Wake Forest. However, we might be able to com- command a premium over someone that's coming out of a directional school, so, I mean, or, or, or community college or what have you. So that's where you also see gaps as well. So that's, that's a bias. So the thing is, as awful as it may sound, we're never going to get to 100% for everyone across the board and everyone's patting each other on, on the back because there are human differences and there are human biases that we're just simply not going to be able to legislate away. However, with studies like this and more studies than what Sam is talking about, it is incumbent upon HR, HR departments and employers to try to be as non-biased as is possible. And it's also up to women to negotiate a little bit better. It's also up to males to you know, negotiate a little bit better. Everyone. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you go back and take a. If you if you take a job, well, that's you're getting what you get. You get what you bargain for. Right. And so, if you want to bargain for more, have at it. And that's uh, that's a huge chunk of it. So, and so, so that's what I think women could or should do: be a little bit more forceful in the in the uh, negotiating phase of uh, accepting a job, and then uh, not be perhaps as pliant uh, for merit increases along the way. So, I don't think there's a good answer for it, Courtney. No, I mean I think that that's a great um, a great advice for future women looking for. Jobs in the workforce for anyone. Yeah, for anyone, but especially for women. And I think, you know, we talk about having labor shortages, and we also talk about there's just not enough workers as baby boomers exit the workforce. And I think to keep women in the workforce and to have those dual income households, we've got to incentivize people by paying them more. That's the way it typically works. Yep. Courtney's got on fire. On fire. I know. I did not get stuff. as heated as I thought I was going to get. What's that? Because we're. So hard to argue with, I guess. Well, I don't yeah. know about that. Well, oh, yeah, you thought this was going to get more heated? I did. I thought I was going to get more passionate about it. I, I felt like I, I handled it well. Okay. First, well, you I, disagree? The first half of the podcast, she couldn't even look at us. 
I was facing the wall. <laughs> just, we, she if we, walked if, out of here. If we've been videotaping this, she's just staring down at her hands while she's talking. <laughs> oh, let's see, see how good and calm I was. You know, that sounded more like Julia Child and Courtney. <laughs> yeah, but that ain't that. Well, guys, thank you all so much for listening. I'm not sure if we really traded perspectives here or really got anything accomplished, but we always love to hear from you all. So if you have any comments or questions, please, by all means, let us know. You can always drop us a line at tradingperspectives at oakworth.com, or you can leave us a review on the podcast outlet of your choice. Of course, if you're interested in reading more or hearing more of what we've got to say or how we think, by all means, please go to oakworth.com and take a look underneath the Thought Leadership tab for all kinds of exciting information. Sam, you don't get any last comments on this because <laughs> this is Courtney's topic. Courtney, do you have any last words on this? No, that's all. Thank you, John. <laughs> that's all I've got today, too. Y'all take care. <laughs>